page five now, seeking peace with Pyongyang. President Trump addressed the United Nations Monday, announcing a likely second summit with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un quite soon. The message coming just before a meeting with the president of South Korea. The two leaders discussing a new version of the U.S.-South Korean trade agreement. We are on a very friendly basis working on trade and working on trade agreements, and we'll see how that all comes out. But much more importantly, frankly, than trade is uh, the other aspect of our relationship that we're working with, and that has to do with North Korea. So we are meeting on a constant basis. We'll be meeting in a little while also with Prime Minister Abe of Japan, and uh, that will be a tri meeting. So we will, uh, we will see, but I think we're making a lot of progress in a lot of different ways. President Trump is slated to deliver several addresses during the 73rd meeting of the United Nations General Assembly, including a speech on sovereignty and one on Iran. Joining me now on the Daily Ledger, page 5B, the founder of the American Truth Project and Daily Ledger contributor, Barry Nussbaum. Welcome to the show, Barry. Good to be with you, Joy. How are you? So what, what do you, you think? Happy to talk about Trump and Iran today. Absolutely. So what do you think is happening with the rest of the world? While President Trump is meeting with foreign world leaders, the tensions in, in Iran and Israel are heating up. So what do you think is going to come out of those tensions? Well, there, there's two ways to look at this. There's the internal discussion as to what has just happened in Iran and how Iran is going to treat it in regards to preventing Trump from organizing against Iran. On the, on the first part of that, uh, the news out of Iran is the biggest terrorist attack in maybe a decade. Um, gunmen opened up on at a Revolutionary Guards parade. Uh, they shot about 75 people, maybe 25 have died. It's a massive terrorist attack inside the most secure place in Iran, inside of a military parade. And Iran is blaming the United States and Israel for orchestrating it, which is absurd, but that's normally what Iran does. Mm -hmm. They cast uh, the enemy in the worst possible light, and that keeps their people uh, under control, at least on a temporary basis. Right. So in regards to the rest of the world, Iran is scrambling now to organize against Trump's speech at the United Nations. Trump has tweeted, uh, and the White House has leaked, that Trump will go before the UN and is meeting with world leaders to mm -hmm. drum up support against the Iran nuclear deal and in support of very heavily increased sanctions that are going to kick in in the coming weeks. Uh, the sanctions thus far, which are not the horrible ones, are destroying Iran's economy, and the word is eventually Iran will have to come to a negotiating table with Trump simply to survive economically. Mm -hmm. so that's the big news out of uh, the United Nations this coming week, Joy. Wow, was the terrible Iran deal a part, part and parcel to these tensions? I think there's no doubt about it. Trump ran for office two years ago on the premise that this is a horrible, disastrous deal, the worst in American foreign policy history. I happen to agree quite strongly with him. Uh, Mike Pompeo, his Secretary of State, believes it. And when he brought in John Bolton as his national security advisor, that was the end of the Iran deal as it used to be known uh, mm -hmm. under Barack Obama's administration. Bolton has campaigned against it for years as That's emboldening right. Iran to export terror all over the world and build nuclear weapons, which as we're talking now, they are probably doing secretly. I agree with you. You know, I, I think Trump is the ultimate peacemaker, though. You know, on the flip side, his means with Korea could be really historic, don't you think? Yeah, he's, he's actually meeting today with uh, the president of South Korea uh, and going to sign a new trade agreement with them. And his pressure that started last year at his speech at the U.N., uh, about Rocket Man, if you remember that speech oh, last year, uh, that brought North Korea to the table, and as a result, we may be on the brink of uh, Nobel Peace Prize talk for Donald Trump mm -hmm. if the North and South are able 
to patch things up, and the North gives away their nuclear weapons. Uh -huh. I, I think, 100 percent agree. I think it's still going to happen. I agree. I mean, this president has done more for foreign relations and peacemaking than any other president in history. Thank you so much, Barry, for joining us.